Okay, now you're going to learn synthetic division. If you use synthetic uh, substitution to evaluate f of x in example 2, when x is equal to 2, as shown below, you can see that f of 2 equals the remainder when f of x is divided by x minus 2. Also, the other values below the line match the coefficients of the quotient. For this reason, synthetic substitution is sometimes called synthetic division. Synthetic division can be used to divide any polynomials by a divisor of the form x minus k. Synthetic division can be used to divide any polynomial by a divisor of the form x minus 2. Key concept, remainder theorem. If a polynomial f of x is divided by x minus k, then the remainder is r is equal to f of k. Okay, example 3, use synthetic division. Now we're going to explain to you the techniques that are needed to do synthetic division. Okay, the first thing to take note of is this number here comes from the x minus k. This negative 3 here comes from the x minus k. So it's going to be the first number you're going to have to put down. But you got to be careful. Whatever this number is, you're going to use the opposite. For example, this says a positive 3, so you're going to end up using a negative 3. Now here's why. Because if you're following the x minus k, right, that means you have x plus 3. That's what we have right here. Well, what is the only way this could be positive starting with the original x minus k? That means that k had to be negative because a negative times a negative is a positive. And that is what they're showing you here. In order for this to be a positive 3, that means the original had to be x minus a negative 3. And then what's a negative 3 times a negative 3? A positive 3. All right, once again, x plus 3 is from the form x minus k. In order for this to end up being positive, that means that the k had to be negative. And then what's a negative times a negative? It's a positive. So a shortcut to this is to simply say, whatever the value is here, just simply use its opposite. So here we're going to use a negative 3. Okay, the next thing we do is we list all the coefficients that are listed in the original problem. So for 2x cubed, we got 2. x squared, the coefficient is 1. Negative 8x, the coefficient is a negative 8. And for 5, that constant just comes down. So that's all we've done so far. So, so far, what have we done? We've taken the negative 3 here by using the opposite, and we simply write down the coefficient for each term that's here. Okay, after, do, after we do that, then we take the first coefficient and we simply bring it down. We take the first coefficient and we bring it down. So once again, repeat. We look at a divisor, and all we do is take the opposite sign, negative 3. Next, we list all our coefficients, and then next, we simply bring down the first term. After that, all we're going to do is multiply and add going in the proper sequence. That 2 we just brought down, so we're going to say a negative 3 times 2. That's equal to a negative 6. Negative 3 times 2. That's equal to a negative 6. Now, what's 1 plus a negative 6? Negative 5. And then we do the same step. Negative 3 times a negative 5, that's going to be a positive 15. Negative 3 times a negative 5, positive 15. Negative 8 plus 15, 7. Negative 3 times 7, negative 21. 5 plus a negative 21, a negative 16. After we do that, we're pretty much finished. All right, let's go through what we've done once again. We look at our divisor. It says a positive 3, so we're going to use a negative 3. 
we write down all the coefficients. 2, 1, negative 8, 5. We bring down the first coefficient, the 2, it just comes down. After that, we multiply and add. Negative 3 times 2, negative 6. 1 plus a negative 6, negative 5. Negative 3 times a negative 5, positive 15. Negative 8 plus 15, 7. Negative 3 times 7, negative 21. 5 plus a negative 21, negative 16. All right, now we write out our entire problem. So we started out by doing, uh, doing so. So we got 2x cubed plus x squared minus 8x plus 5, and that was divided by x plus 3. After dividing, we found that we got uh, our first term is going to be 2x squared. Our next term is going to be a negative 5x. Our next term is going to be plus 7. And our remainder was a negative 16. As we know, we write the negative 16 over our divisor, x plus 3. Now remember now, don't lead off with the x cubed. Lead off with the x squared. Right? Don't lead off with an x cubed term. Lead off with the x squared term. Now the reason for that is if you were doing like long division, you would have said 2x cubed divided by x. Now what's 2x cubed divided by x? x cubed divided by x would be x squared. See? And that 2 would come down. So your lead off is going to be 2x squared. Now, once again, 2x squared minus 5x plus 7, and your remainder has to be that negative 16 over the divisor. Key concept, factor theorem. A polynomial f of x has a factor x minus k if and only if f of k is equal to 0. The factor theorem can be used to solve a variety of problems. Problem. Given one factor of a polynomial, find the other factors. Example 4 below is going to refer to that. Give, given one zero of a polynomial function, find the other zeros. That would be example 5. And given one solution of a polynomial equation, find the other solutions. Example 6. Example 4, factor a polynomial. Factor f of x is equal to 3x cubed minus 4x squared minus 28x minus 16 completely given that x plus 2 is a factor. Solution, because x plus 2 is a factor of f of x, you know that f of negative 2 equals 0. Use synthetic division to find the other factors. So don't forget the remainder after using synthetic division should always be zero when you are dividing a polynomial by one of its factors. In this case, we are dividing this polynomial by one of its factors. Now don't forget, we start off with x plus two. We're gonna use the opposite. What's the opposite of a negative of a positive two? Negative two. Then we list all the coefficients. 3, negative 4, negative 28, negative 16. Then we bring that first term down. We just drop it down. After that, we multiply and then add. Negative 2 times 3, negative 6. Negative 4 plus a negative 6 is a negative 10. Negative 2 times a negative 10, positive 20. Negative 28 plus 20 is a negative 8. Negative 2 times a negative 8, positive 16. 16 minus 16, 0. Notice, no remainder. Okay, now we're going to use the result to write f of x as a product of two factors and then compactor, and then factor completely, as in um, algebra 1. So f of x is equal to a negative 3x cubed minus 4x squared minus 28x minus 16. That was our original problem. Okay, then we realized that the first factor, we already knew, x plus 2, that's what we divided by. 
After dividing, we came out with this. We came out with 3x squared minus 10x minus 8, and it was no zero. Okay, now we can factor this trinomial. Now we can factor this trinomial. Now this is an algebra one step. You have to recall how to, how to factor this trinomial. And to do this, the method that I have you use to solve this is the box method. Or you can just simply use trial and error or completing the square or using a quadratic equation. Okay, to remind you and to reteach you in the box method, here we go. We write the first term down 3x squared. We write the last term down negative 8. 3x squared, negative 8. Okay. All right, now what's 3x squared times a negative 8? A negative 24x squared. Now I got to come out with 24 through multiplication, but come out with a negative 10 through addition. 8 and 3 won't work, and I ended up using negative 12 and a positive 2. Uh, negative 12 times 2 would give me a negative 24, and a negative 12 plus 2 would give me a negative 10. All right, so then I factor in every direction. I got 3x squared minus 12x. What's the greatest common factor? Here is going to be 3x. Here is going to be 2. Here is going to be x. And here is going to be 4. So I got x minus 4. That's what they have there. And I have 3x plus 2. That's what they have there. So my final answer is x plus 2 times 3x plus 2 times x minus 4. Example 5, standardized test practice. 1, 0 of f of x is equal to x cubed minus 2x squared minus 23x plus 60 is x equals 3. Notice that here it says x is equal to 3. What is another 0 of, uh, of f? And then it gives us our choices. Now notice the solution. f of 3 is 0. That meant that originally that we had x minus 3. Now if we had x minus 3 and that was set equal to 0, that's how we come out with x is equal to 3. Set this equal to 0 and then move the 3 to the other side. That's how we got x is equal to 3. So here we're actually going to use the 3. Then we're going to apply our synthetic division. Don't forget we write down our coefficients. 1, negative 2, negative 23, 60. We bring the 1 down, multiply, 3 times 1 is 3, add, come out with 1, 3 times 1 is 3, add, come out with 20, and then 3 times a negative 20 is a negative 60, add, come out with 0. Then we follow the exact same steps we did in example 4. We're going to use the results to write f of x as a polynomial of two factors, then factor completely. So we get f of x is equal to x cubed minus 2x squared minus 23x plus 60. And that's equal to x minus 3, that's our original, times x squared plus x minus 20. x squared plus x minus 20. And when we factor out x squared plus x minus 20, we end up with x plus 5 times um, x minus 4. So that's our answer right there. So the zeros are 3, negative 5, and 4. Example 6, use a polynomial model. Business, the profit P in millions of dollars for a shoe manufacturer can be modeled by P is equal to a negative 21x cubed plus 46x, where x is the number of shoes produced in millions. The company now produces 1 million shoes and makes a profit of 25 million, but would like to cut back production. What lesser number of shoes could, could the company produce and still make the same profit? Solution. Substitute 25 for P in P is equal to negative 21x cubed plus 46x. Right there, they substitute it into 25. Right in standard form. So move the negative 21 to that side, and then move the positive 46 to that side. And this is what you'll end up with. You know that x is equal to 1 is one solution of the equation. This implies that x minus 1 is a factor.